Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Justine. If you guys are new here, I want to thank all my new subscribers. I appreciate it so, so much. And I love getting to know all of you down in the comments below. Today, we have a ton of preserving to do. Um, it's about 7.07 .07 in the morning. And I've already got up, started my laundry, done a, folded a load of laundry, drank my coffee, watched my gardening videos on YouTube. <laughs> so we've got all of these tomatoes to do something with today. Um, I've got a mass of green beans, not really a mass. Um, I'm going to say it's going to do probably three quarts. Um, we harvested our cantaloupe yesterday, our first cantaloupe. And then I've got like seven Kajari melons we need to do something with today. And I'm actually, I've been making homemade popsicles for my daughter. So um, I don't really want to feed her all the sugar that's in the uh, popsicles from the store and preservatives and whatever else is in them. So I've been making our own. Um, and I thought, thought that I may try to blend up some Kajari melons, maybe with some stevia or some honey. We harvested our first couple eggplants yesterday, a couple of zucchini, and this is super exciting. We harvested our first spaghetti squash yesterday. That is super exciting. Spaghetti squash is a winter squash, which does not mean that it grows in the winter. It means that it's good to preserve through the winter and the hard skin on it will help keep it good throughout the winter months. So I did grow a lot of butternut squash and I try to grow quite a bit of spaghetti squash to kind of help get us through some of the winter months when the garden's not producing that much. Let me show you what else we have to preserve. So last night while my husband and I sat and watched our show, we snapped these green beans and then I kind of just let them soak and get all the, the nasties off and I rinsed them last night. So we're going to can those. We've got these tomatoes, I believe, that we're going to cook down in a sauce. I want to cut these tomatoes up and put them in the dehydrator. We've got some peppers we need to chop. Then you can see the rest of the Kajari melons we have. We've got some okra, but we did have some snacks of okra last night. Um, while we sat there and watched our show and snapped beans, we I rinsed off some okra, put them in a bowl, and then put some salt on them. They were super good. So okra is actually part of the hibiscus and uh, marshmallow plant. The slimy stuff in okra that a lot of people don't like, that is called mucilage. Uh, it's so good for your gut, and it's great for gut health. The first thing we're going to do this morning is go ahead and get these green beans put in a jar. Usually I like to use wide mouth jars when I do green beans just because I feel like they're a little bit easier to get in and out. But I don't have any wide mouth jars right there in the cabinet. And I'm not going to open another box of jars to do so. Now this is a raw pack method. So what that means is you're going to have a cold product not cooked. The product being the green beans. We're going to have the cold jars and we're just going to pack them in. But I'm going to grab a funnel. So with this raw pack method, the cons to that is you're going to lose, you know, a little bit of space that you would have if you cook them and they were pliable first. So since we only have about half of a jar, I'm just going to stick these in the refrigerator and I'll cook them up for lunch. So we've got our brand new lids. You've got to have new lids. And that's because they have like this little, uh, you can feel it. It's kind of sticky on the rim. And that is what seals your jars. And so after they're used, um, a lot of times that seal isn't good anymore. Now it used to be recommended to boil your lids. It's not recommended to do that anymore. You don't have to do that. You just need to make sure um, it's really good not to touch these either. You know, touch the ring of this. You don't want to put any debris or, or germs or anything like that on them. We've got our rings. Now you can reuse the rings. The rings are fine to reuse. We're going to go ahead and put our salt in here. I'm going to use Redmond's Real Salt. So in your canner, you will see a little notch. Well, I say that. This is actually the only canner I've ever had or used. I would like to eventually get a new one. I actually got this out of flea market for $15. It's a Presto canner. But it is important that you find that notch and you fill it up to that because I have actually ran my canner too hot one time and ran my canner dry and you do not want to do that. Okay, so for raw pack method, you still go ahead and put your boiling water over your jars. I do this very, very slowly because if you don't, <laughs> you will crack your jars just because of the temperature difference. But your jars are actually supposed to be hot. I don't put them in the oven or anything like that. A lot of people I've heard put them in a dishwasher at first. I just soak mine in really hot water in the sink and then they're good to go. This is a letter, little measuring tool that'll come with your canning kit. And you're just going to want to make sure it's clean and then Kind of poke down in there and get all the air bubbles out. Now you're going to want one, a generous inch of headspace in these jars. 
So I like to take this part and kind of just push down. Now on here, there are measurements. So you've got a quarter inch, a half inch, three quarters of an inch, and an inch. And you're going to want, for your raw pack green beans, an inch of headspace. And that's perfect. So you just stick that on the side of your jar and measure. There might be just a little too much. We'll just dump some of that out. And so you might have to adjust because whenever you stick your tool down in there to get the air bubbles out, the water level can go down. So you might have to add a little bit more. If you add too much water into your jars with anything or add too much liquid, it can actually cause your jars to siphon whenever they're in the canner, which can create a faulty seal, which you do not want. You don't want to do all this work and prep and then put your jars in the canner and they overfill and then your lids not seal. So next we're going to just take a wet clean rag and we're going to wipe the rims of this. Now if we were doing meat or something like that we would definitely use like a vinegar solution just to kind of help loosen up any fats or anything like that on the rims. But for just green beans a wet clean rag will work. You just want to make sure you get all the debris and anything off the rims so that your lids can seal well. All right, we've got our lids. No need to boil. Remember, stick them on. Put your rings on. Fingertip tight. The reason why you want to do fingertip tight is because it, if you go any tighter and manhandle it, it can cause your lids to actually buckle in the canner. So my friend and I were talking and I was like, you know, I just don't really know if it's a good idea to get my canner out for two quarts of green beans. And she's like, honestly, Justine, don't feel bad because, you know, you could have let them go to waste. And then what? All of that sowing of the seeds and picking and everything else would have been for waste. So um, it makes me feel good that we're going to have two more quart jars of green beans on our shelf for the winter. Something else I've actually been thinking about. Actually, let me show you this real quick. So if you're having trouble getting your lid on your canner like I was at first, there's actually a um, little arrow <laughs> that lines up with the arrow on your canner. And you line them up. And then you turn it. And I'm just going to put this up to about six. And this is what I have found to run my canner on. I'm not going to lie to you. At first, I feel like it's a little bit of a trial and error thing um because whenever you don't know you just don't know and so i had my canner running way too hot way too high you don't want to run it necessarily on high or it's going to be way too um way too hot and then i ran my canner dry so um keeping it just at like a boiling point is good and about six is where i need to have mine so we're going to wait until this starts steaming at the top for 10 minutes um, this little pressure gauge here will pop up once this steams for 10 minutes which I'll show you whenever it comes on uh, we're going to drop our weight on it and then once that starts jiggling we'll start our timer While those green beans are getting up to temp, I'm just going to go ahead and unload my dishwasher. That way this can be ready to fill up for the day. So if I don't do this now, the dishes are just going to pile up. Um, anyway, I was actually thinking, like, in the summertime, we eat so much squash and, you know, so many tomatoes. But we don't eat those throughout the winter months because they're not growing. So canning your green beans and stuff like that are not in season. Like your squash, you can't, there's not really a great way to preserve it. Um, it's really best fresh eaten. So I've made a lot of zucchini boats this year. We have just really been trying to eat seasonally. Um, so these green beans, we haven't eaten a ton of them fresh, but it's because we have all this other garden food to eat fresh. So I'm just canning these for winter. So this winter, green beans will obviously be something that we're eating a lot of. I was proud of myself last night. I actually got my kitchen all cleaned up and 
done. There was just a couple of dishes in the sink when I got up this morning. We had the coffee pot ready to go at four o'clock. And it just feels so nice whenever you get up and <laughs> have everything ready. You feel like your day is already started off on a good foot, way better than waking up and everything being a disaster. And then you feel like you have to hit the ground running before you even get started with your day. Really makes for a way more productive day whenever you have it all done at night. I think for now I'm going to move these over. I think I'll just put them on the floor right here. And then we'll start working on these tomatoes. I want to try to keep this picked up as much as I can. There's a trash bag in here. We took a trash bag outside last night so we could pick up any kind of little. We have, we've had company all weekend, which we love. But sometimes things can get a little messy after we've got company for days at a time. So here, do you want some of your cherries? Here you go. So it's early in the morning and I do like to go ahead and decide what we're going to have for dinner. That way I can pull the meat out of the freezer um, because I've mentioned before, we eat at home a lot. We rarely eat out. I think I'm going to make our spaghetti squash that we harvested last night. And I want to show you guys a really cool trick to cook this. And I don't know if you guys have seen the price of spaghetti squash at the store. I don't, I don't know that they are um, the same, but whenever I seen them last time, they were $5 a spaghetti squash. All right, I'm gonna grab out my handy dandy crock pot. All you're gonna do is fill up your crock pot with just a little water in the bottom. Your crock pot. I really like to make spaghetti squash fettuccine, or you can just do regular spaghetti um, with spaghetti squash. I'll probably do fettuccine tonight because I laid out chicken yesterday. It's in the refrigerator. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put a couple of stab marks in this rind of the spaghetti squash. I like cooking the spaghetti squash like this because these are really, really hard for rinds, and they're, they can be pretty hard to cut. If you don't have the strength to cut through the rinds, putting them on high for four hours, putting some things in them, and I guess you also need to plug it in because that would have been bad. Um, they will, when you take them out, they will be super soft and you can cut, cut right through them. All right, this is not going to work here. Chicken bowl scrap, chicken scrap bowl. And then I also in my refrigerator have a whole bag of dragon tongue bush beans that I need to do something with. So I've got the timer set for the canner. You can see that it's starting to stream steadily out the top. And then I've got my weight to pop on the top whenever the 10 minutes is up. The green beans that I put in the jar earlier, we'll probably cook those up for lunch. I usually try to make enough for dinner um, to have enough for lunch the next day because I always pack my husband's lunch. And we, I try to make enough for dinner that we have leftovers so that he can take his lunch and still have something healthy. So it's not very often that we go out to lunch with my mom or my grandma. Um, we do do that sometimes, but not just a whole lot. All right, our timer went off. All right, I am at 10 pounds of pressure. When it comes to canning, you have to know your elevation so that you know how many pounds of pressure you need um, to can with. I'm at 10 pounds. I think we're at 1,200 to see my pressure gauge is up. We'll start waiting for that to jiggle. And I'll show you the steady kind of slow pace that it needs to be. And then after it gets that steady jiggle, you start your timer. All right, this is already my 
third towel today. No wonder I have so much laundry. All right, I've got my tomatoes all washed up, and I'm just going to start slicing them up, um, cutting them in half, really, because they're cherries. And then we're going to put them on the dehydrator tray. Something else I've learned this year is for making salsas or sauces or whatever, you can actually dehydrate those skins and then make them into a powder for a tomato paste powder. What, baby? Good job! That is exactly what you want your weight to be doing on your canner. Just this nice, slow jiggle. And we're going to go ahead and set the timer for our 25 minutes. All right, guys, our timer is going off. So I'm just going to turn this off and scoot it back off of the heat and let that puppy cool down for a while. You want to let it cool down very slowly. You don't want it to cool down too, too quickly or it'll crack your jars. So we're going to let this cool down. We're going to let this pressure gauge go down. This, this, this will completely stop jiggling once this goes down. And it's going to take a while. 30, 45 minutes, and then you're going to let that sit 10 more minutes after this goes down, and then you can take your weight off. I wait a little bit longer just to ensure, and then you can pop the top. Now we're moving on to the tomatoes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rinse these off. And I'm going to move this and set them here. Most of these are beefsteak tomatoes. We've got a couple super sauce hybrids, but I don't think I'll ever grow the super sauce again. So this is just gonna go to the chickens. But you see how this is completely rotted? All of our super sauce hybrid tomatoes are doing that. Um, right on the vine, before they're even ripe. I'm not, I don't understand. And then we've got some big pink hybrids, which these are beautiful fruit. Um, they are the hybrid, so we don't have much cat facing. This is called cat facing. This is a pretty mild case of it. Um, this is just like two tomatoes fused together. And so what will happen with heirloom tomatoes is the blossoms on the plant will actually fuse together, and it will give you multiple fruit. And that's okay for the most part. If you find a really big one with a lot um, of fused blossoms, you may want to go ahead and pick that off uh, because – a lot of times these will get pockets of rot in them, and then a lot of the a lot of the tomato won't even be usable. Just keep that in mind when growing heirlooms. I love growing heirlooms, but sometimes they can be kind of gnarly. You can see where my little garden helper took a bite. So most of these tomatoes are slicing tomatoes, like the beef sticks are slicing, and then you've got your sauce tomatoes. And the sauce tomatoes are the best tomatoes to use for making sauce, obviously, because they're more meaty and they don't have near as much juice. But it is perfectly okay to use slicing tomatoes for sauce. Um, I'll show you what I do with the juice that I get out of my tomato sauce. I actually like using and having more juicy tomatoes, and that's just because I love canning the juice. Now, the best time to really can your tomatoes is, well, right after you pick them, but you want the best um, product. You don't want to use something that's super rotted like this. Now, I'm going to cut half of this off, and this will be fine to use, but you do want to use a really nice, good-looking fruit to can. 
Now I'm just going to chop these up. I am not removing the skins and the reason why I'm not removing the skins is because I am going to use an immersion blender and I'm going to blend up this sauce before I can it. So I did this last year. I've done this in years past. I've also talked to people who have done it in year, you know, um, and someone commented last year and asked if the tomato sauce was bitter because of the skins. And personally, I don't think it's bitter at all. So it's your own preference. You can um, boil these in water and get the skins off. The skins will just pop right off. When you put them in water, I did do that with my salsa. And I'm not saying I wouldn't ever do that. I just, I actually have just so much to preserve today that I want to get these cooking down and going. And that's just an extra step that I'm not going to take today. If you've done both ways and you notice a huge difference, let me know and tell me what you think. I personally don't think it makes that big of a difference, but maybe I should try it the other way and see. Last year, whenever I would put these in here and this would start getting really hot, I would, if there was like a big skin that slipped off and I could see that, I would go ahead and just pick that out. Okay, now I know this looks like a lot of tomatoes. Don't let it scare you. It's going to cook down a lot. Um, and I think I said we were doing the seasoned tomato sauce. We're actually doing the Italian style tomato sauce. And it is on page 363. This calls for eight cups of tomatoes, and uh, which is a liter. This is a liter. <laughs> so I'm sure that we're like quadrupling this recipe, honestly, to be quite honest. So it calls for two-thirds cup of finely chopped celery. We're just going to use an entire package of celery. We like things very seasoned around here. And I know this isn't super finely chopped, but like I said, we're going to use the immersion blender. So it is going to be just fine. A half of cup of carrots. You guys are going to be amazed at how much this cooks down in just a couple of hours. Two thirds cup onion. Oh my gosh, it already smells so good. We have quite the chicken scrap bowl going. Don't drop a knife on the floor and cut your foot off. So it calls for two, tea, two teaspoons of salt, but since we are over more than doubling this recipe, we are going to put more than two teaspoons. Black pepper, half a teaspoon. And I am going to Add in some dry Italian seasoning. Hi, baby. Oh my goodness. You're crazy. Okay, now we're going to take a potato masher and just kind of push down on these tomatoes. Woo! That one popped. So you're doing this just to get the juices out and help them not burn to the bottom. I'm just going to cover these with the lid. They are on 300, 325, and I'm just going to let them cook down until we can really just start stirring them up. Okay, you guys, you can see how this pressure gauge is down. This has been down for quite a while, so I'm going to go ahead and just pop this top and just be careful when you take it off to make sure the steam doesn't come out and burn your hands. But this has been off the heat and cooled for quite some time. Probably an hour if I had to guess. All right. And they are done. You just want to lift them out. 
And be careful not to tip them any which way. I'm actually going to set these on a towel right here on the stove. All right, our green beans are out. We're gonna give our spaghetti squash a look. After about two hours, you can turn it over in the crock pot and it's already getting super soft. You can see how it's brown right here on the end and that is perfectly fine. But just look how soft this is already. I mean, that's gonna be so easy to cut. There's still water in the bottom, which there is. And that is going to make really nice dinner. Okay, the next thing we need to work on is these Kajari melons. We need to get these cut up and blend it up and put in the freezer. That way, in just a little bit, we can get them out. I'm going to go ahead and get my blender out. I have the Nutribullet RX. I do like this Nutribullet pretty well. I've had it for a couple of years. I do like it for the most. I don't like that you have to add so much liquid to make it blend. Um, I don't know. I've never really had another blender, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. I don't know if you guys have ever grown Kajari melons, but I do recommend them. They are very, very good. They're very sweet. They can range, um, the flesh can range in colors from pale green to light orange. The ones that I have gotten have been light green, but they kind of remind me of the honeydew melon, just not with such a gritty texture. Like it has a more smooth texture, I feel like. I don't know if, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just going to cut the rinds off of these and put them into the blender. Look how many seeds are in these melons though. I mean, think about it. You buy a packet of seeds for goodness, $5 <laughs> and you get three packets of seeds and one melon. And how you would save these seeds, because this is the gelatinous film over them. Like tomatoes and stuff like that actually has like a gelatinous film over the seeds. And that's so that it can pass through animal digestive tract, essentially be pooped out and reseeded. So the gelatinous um, film on those helps preserve the seed in the animal. I thought that was really interesting when I learned that. You would put them in a jar of water, and then you let them sit for a couple days, swish them around. Don't put a lid or anything on top of them. Um, kind of give them a little bit of a, a stir. And after a couple days, you'll have stuff that floats to the top, which are your bad seeds. And the good seeds will sink to the bottom. So anything that was rotten or not good will float. All that stuff can be skimmed off with a spoon, and you can just discard that. And then you'll lay your seeds out on a dry paper towel and let them dry very, very well before you put them in a baggie. Um, a lot of times people will say put them in a paper bag. That way they don't um, mold because if you put them in a plastic bag and lock that moisture in, they're going to mold. So put them in a paper bag. And it's as easy as that. It's as easy as that's how you save seeds. All right, before we blend up our Kajari melons, I'm going to go ahead and put this another little stir. It's already cooking down quite a bit. So when I bought these popsicle forms, they came with a book and every recipe that was in the book called for coconut milk. So, and actually before, this is funny, but before I even read the books, um, I had some coconut milk in the cabinet. And so I went ahead and used that. And then when I read the recipe book and I was like, oh man, well, I'm already doing that step. So that's good. So I'm going to add coconut milk into this. Kajari melon popsicle recipe and then I'm going to add some honey and this is not a recipe that I've gotten I'm just trying to preserve these melons because if you don't eat melons pretty quickly They go bad. We're gonna make it into your popsicles Yeah, so this is the popsicle form. I can link it down in the in the description box below I bought one and my grandma bought one and I like the one she got better and the reason why is because it comes with a topper. Okay, well that's weird. I can't find the top. If I can find the top, I'll take a picture of it. But anyway, it's like a flat top that has little holes in it that you can put the popsicle sticks down in, disposable ones, or it comes with these, which the one I ordered also comes with the 
these. But I was reading a blog post and she was saying that, you know, when your kids go outside or whatever, they leave the popsicle sticks everywhere and so disposable really are the best. But anyway, I'm going to try this. I feel like that'll be a pretty good popsicle. It also comes with this little funnel, which there was another one, but I couldn't, I can't find it anywhere. So, and it just helps you whoop, 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 dump it in. And you don't want to overfill them or when you stick the little popsicle stick in, you'll make a mess. Whoa, mm, don't grab a hold of it like that either. So I think some of these will probably be a little over full. That's all right. Mama. You excited? So I've got just a little bit more here in the in the blender and my mom picked me up some ice cube trays the other day so I'm just gonna pick them out whenever they're frozen and just put them in a baggie and then if I make a smoothie or something I can pop them in there all right guys so it's been just a couple of hours and you can see this has cooked down so much and look how good it looks and oh my goodness it smells amazing okay and now I set up um, a jar with a strainer and my funnel and I have got a ladle and I have actually I have actually talked about this a lot in my videos <clears throat> that I will just strain this juice off and put it into a jar and then I'll can it and it's literally as simple as that you push your spoon down pour it in your funnel and your strainer and then I'll just keep scraping the the extras that are left over in the strainer and putting them back in. And you can see there's a ton of juice coming off these and this jar is almost full. So you can imagine if you do a couple batches of this, how many jars of tomato juice you'll have. And so if I'm just doing like regular tomatoes in here and just straining off regular tomato juice, I will just label it tomato juice. If it's seasoned, I will label it seasoned tomato juice because it's obviously going to be flavored and I'll use these in soups I'll use it in chili honestly sometimes I will make it into a Bloody Mary I mean there are so many things you can do with tomato juice and this is just gonna help it cook down faster and not have to cook near as long um, because if you let this cook down until all this juice was evaporated, you would be waiting quite a few hours. I like to kill two birds with one stone and just do it both. You're getting double the product for your tomatoes, which is awesome. And I've done this this way for the three years that I've canned, and I love it. I actually was not expecting... I was not expecting three quarts of tomato juice off of this already um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it in the canner I've already got more water we're gonna water bath can this we're not gonna pressure can it so you can actually use your hang on let me look and see I think it's two tablespoons for a quart so we need a half an inch of head space in these there's about an inch right now so I think we can probably get away with two tablespoons of lemon juice this is just store bottled lemon juice you can actually use your pressure canner for a water bath canner. You just have to take off the rubber ring around the edge of it. So I'll show you how I do that. And when you water bath can, when you pressure can, it's completely different. You just need a little bit of water to that nick where I was talking about earlier. If you are water bath canning, you have to have your jars completely covered with water, about an inch over the top of them. But don't fill it all, don't fill your 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 um canner all the way up and then put your jars in because it's going to overfill i've done that many of times ask me how i know um so i have oh my goodness 
All right, so I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and leave the top off of this. Um, it has cooked down quite a bit already, and so I'm just gonna let help the extra juice absorb, um, not absorb, um, evaporate out of this. So I'm just gonna leave that on. It's on 250. I did turn it down from the 325, 300 to about 250. I want to be a half an inch, so let's make sure. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, that one's right at it, but it's all right. It's not over, so. All right, we've got our new jars. I mean, I'm all kinds of messed up. Actually, not. I'm not going to fib. I laid down with Iva <clears throat> when she laid down and took her nap. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, and I didn't fall asleep until 1 in the morning. Do you guys do that? I mean, sometimes I'll just get, like, in a rabbit hole, and I'm not even on, like, social media. I'm not even on Facebook or anything like that. I'm on Pinterest looking at recipes to cook for garden things. All right, so fingertip tight. Hi. Hush, Tito. Okay, you can see that I've got my water in here, and you can see how much the water level goes up whenever I put these in. You see how much this filled up? Okay, and since the contents in these jars are hot, you're going to want your water to be hot. And I'm going to add water. This is hot water. I have it on high so that it'll come up to a boil pretty quickly. All right, they need to be completely covered, so about an inch above. Okay, hang on. Okay, now you don't want this to be boiling over so hard that it boils over the top here, but let me show you this. All right, so here's your canner lid. Here's your rubber ring. Just pop it off. Set it to the side. And then you just set this on top. You just set it where it's nice and and we'll let that come up to a boil. And once it's boiling, you'll let these process for 40 minutes. All right, so I've got my tomato juice in the canner. And while that is finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and get this chicken out of the bag and put it in the air fryer. Oh, our tomatoes are done. Oh yeah, those need longer. Let's do like two more hours on those, honestly. And, oh man, these are still just a little bit frozen. I'm gonna run some cold water in the sink and put these upside down in there. I've accumulated a little bit of dishes. And by the way, I wonder how many times I can change towels today on my shoulder. I'm going to restart the dryer. I probably need to unload this dishwasher so I can start loading my other stuff. I really like using the air fryer and the crock pot in the summer. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't do it a ton, but I do like doing it when I do because it is so hot outside and my air conditioner already has a hard time keeping up when it's 100 degrees outside. All right, now that is done. Oh, oh, we got something stuck in the sink. You know, it's no wonder I have so much laundry, but I have cleaned up a ton of messes with the towels I've had on my shoulder. When you have a two-year-old walking around, messes happen. Get the air fryer all set up and ready for our chicken. All right, it's boiling. So we can go ahead and start our 40 minute timer. All right, our chicken is thawed and I am just going to, well, it's kind of thawed. I'm just gonna. And only about three of these drumsticks fit in here, which that's fine. So they're a little bit thicker. Usually you do 12 minutes if they were thighs. I did 12 minutes, but I, last night I did 15 and that was the perfect amount, so. We'll stick these in there. We've got about 15 minutes left on tomatoes. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to put it at 350 for 15 minutes. I'm going to let this tomato juice cool down before I take these out. But I am thinking that our sauce is just about ready to blend up. Just gonna strain the rest of this juice. Get as much as I can off. The more you strain, 
the thicker your sauce is going to be. Oh, and you know what? I didn't even put my strainer on there. Let's dump that out. So I really like to push this tomato, these tomatoes down and really just try to strain off as much juice as I can. And I did turn up the heat just a little bit to kind of try to cook them down more. This is why I let them cook longer, just to strain this off. And you can always add tomato paste. I don't know if I have any tomato paste on hand. I'm going to look in my cabinet real quick and see. Because if I do, I'll add the tomato paste just to help thicken it up. I really like thick spaghetti sauce or thick tomato sauce in general. All right, those are out. And you should start hearing lids pop, which is a great sign. Our chicken's done. I'm going to go ahead and grab that out. Uh, I'm thinking these might need just a little more. I think these might still have been a little bit frozen. I'll just put them in for five more minutes. So I realized my mic wasn't on, and <laughs> um, I had to make a Dollar General run really fast. First things first, though. They have their fall stuff out, and I got this maple pumpkin cookie candle. Oh, my Lord, you guys. It smells so good. Oh. Hello? All right, I love you, too. Bye. All right, my mama called me. So I got this, this candle. I just can't stop smelling it. All right, I'm going to light it. I was going to wait till tomorrow, but I'm not. I'm lighting it right now. And then I picked up the ragu sauce for my fettuccine alfredo. I actually have made that um, a few times homemade, and I really like making it homemade. But since I just have all this stuff going on in the kitchen, I just figured I'd pick it up and make it easy. This is my favorite. Got another phone call. Hang on. Okay, and then um, what was I saying anyway? Hmm. Oh, yes. Okay, so I've made the ragu sauce. Not the ragu sauce. I've made the alfredo sauce before. Um and it's really, really good, but I'm not going to worry about doing that tonight. Um, so this is my new immersion blender, and I ordered it on Amazon the other day. I'll link it down below. It's called Bonson Kitchen, and it works really, really well. I'm really liking it. It was super cheap. And then at Dollar General, I got some minced garlic to put in this because I remembered that I forgot to put it in earlier. There is still just juice coming off of this. I guess I'll... I guess I'll Go ahead and put one more jar out and try to strain the rest. And then after we blend it, we're going to add our tomato sauce. So, I mean, our tomato paste. Timer just went off for the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and flip that. All right. Um, let me get another jar. Oh, I have to show you one more thing. Don't look at my kitchen floors. They're dirty. I've been in the kitchen all day. But look at this cute rug I got at Dollar General. Isn't that adorable? It was $8. It's not like I don't already have like, three totes of fall decorations or anything. Fine. And, by the way, I have no fall decor out yet. This is the only two things that I've gotten out yet, so don't come at me. Go ahead and dump in our tomato paste. And I turned the heat up just a little bit. I want to try to boil this down and get as thick as I can before I can it. All right, let's go ahead and get our spaghetti squash out of the crock pot. So what you're going to do is cut the top off. And then you're going to slice it down like this. Open it up. It may be just a hair overcooked. I'm going to take my a jarry bowl from earlier and just scrape these seeds in here. Yeah, it may be just a hair overcooked. When we took a nap, I left it on, and I probably should have done that. But that's okay. It's still good, and it's going to be just fine. Oh my gosh, that candle smells amazing. Okay, this is literally how easy it is. Ready? Look at that. It's already coming out. Now this is a bit overcooked. I've cooked quite a few of these um, and this is just a hair overcooked but it'll still be really good. 
usually it comes out in like longer pieces, longer shreds. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, and by the way, I was talking to somebody earlier, and actually my mom, and she was telling me that spaghetti squash were seven dollars a squash at the store now. Remember I was saying they were five earlier? Well, she just told me they're seven. That is absolutely insane to me. I'm going to scrape every last bit of this off the rind. I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 pull out all my pans because you know you got to store your pans in your oven right anybody else let's check on the sauce Ooh, see all the liquid in here so i'm thinking it's just about ready but i'm gonna pull the rest of this off if i can i kind of made a little well in the middle kind of try to draw out that liquid I mean, and it's probably not necessary to go to this extent, but like I said, I like thick sauce. This is kind of how I've figured out how to do it. We've just got to keep cooking and keep straining. I'm going to can this sauce in a quart jar, which, like I said earlier, I like when we cook something, it's a pretty big batch of it for the next day's lunches. So you either use lemon juice or citric acid. I never have the citric acid, so I always just use the lemon juice. I'm going to pop these lids off and rinse these jars out and rinse the lids off and get them hot to go into the canner. I'm just rinsing them to make sure there's no dust or debris or anything like that. I'm going to grab my funnel. Make sure there's no air bubbles. And I actually learned um, from a viewer that commented that you are not supposed to use a metal spoon or silverware because it can actually nick the sides of your jars. And I'm very glad that she told me that because I had no idea. Clean wet rag around your rim. This can You cannot skip this step, guys. This has to be done just because there's going to be stuff on the rim. Put your thing on, finger tight. There's one. Alright, you ready to see how the popsicles are? I read on a blog that it's good to let them sit out for just a little bit. See how easy that was to slide out? And that just helps them whoop, melt just a hair, and then you can get it out. Popsicle! Hang on, let me try it. Can mommy try it? Here you go. You want to try it? What do you think? Is it good? Mama. It's cold. Is it good? Say, look right here. Say, mmm, it's good. Good. <laughs> well, there's no complaint from her yet. They're actually pretty good. They taste, honestly, they taste like a Kajari melon. We're going to need just a little more water in here. And now we let it come up to a boil. All right, guys, this chicken's done. I'm just going to lay it on this so I don't have to dirty another dish getting it out. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to grab this and go ahead and start filling it with hot water. All right, you guys, that is the end of the video for today. Um, I will take out, see if you can see this. I will take the tomato sauces out of the can.
canner in just a minute. I'm making my husband's bowl. Hopefully this is good, babe. But it looks like it turned out delicious. I really appreciate all you guys watching and hanging out with me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below where you're from. If you're a new subscriber, I'd love to get to know you. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.